How did this weird little RPG project turn into a roguelike looking like this? Stay put to find out. This is me, Jonas Broman, and I make games together with this guy, Fabian Bergvall. In this video, I will talk about how we began working on our new roguelike game called... Well, that's the awkward thing. It's a year in the making and it's still untitled. And I guess it's also pretty awkward to make your first devlog after one year. But, as they say, better late than never, so here we are. So, how did we start working on this game? Well, let me take you back in time to 2017. We had just finished working on our action platformer, Heroes of Highwall. A game where you have to defend your castle against waves of evil trolls and their leader, Igor the Cyclops. You could play either with some pretty decent bots, or together with your friends online, something that we had just learned how to program. We uploaded Heroes of Highwall to Game Jolt, and actually got featured on the site, which we of course were very proud of. Many YouTubers also took interest in our game, and we got lots of great feedback. And we had a really good time watching all the videos that just kept coming. But nothing lasts forever. After a while, videos of Heroes of Highwall stopped being made, and we decided that it was time to start working on a new game. Days, weeks and months passed by, but we had no idea of what kind of game we wanted to make next. So, we just started to try different things, just to see if it felt right. We began working on a tower defense game, based on our first game called Christmas Quest, where you play as Santa Claus. Which is why, surprise surprise, we call ourselves Santa Games. But after some prototypes, we felt that this wasn't gonna work, so we trashed the idea. We then started working on a top-down stealth game, where you play as a female prisoner trying to escape a building full of evil guards. You could also command a friendly rat to fetch keys for you. Or just use him to scout to see where the guards are. We even had keypads with random generated codes that you had to find somewhere on the level. But again, after some prototypes, we felt that the game was kinda boring, so we trashed this idea as well. With our third project, we tried making an RTS game. It started out with very basic pixel art graphics, and we tried to get the Solar AI to make things as moving groups, and the villagers to gather resources, such as wood. We then took the graphics to the next level, and decided to make our game isometric, and that all our assets should be made in 3D in Blender. The game started to feel really good, but, unfortunately, our vision was too ambitious, and it would take too long time to finish the game, especially with everything made in 3D. So, yet again, we trashed the idea. It was now many months since we released Heroes of Highwall, and we still didn't have a new project going on. I was getting bored by not having a game to work on, so, I opened up Game Maker and began working on something that started out looking like a Zelda game, and then slowly evolved into a roguelike. It was actually very fun to play, and I really liked exploring the random generated levels. So, I asked Fabian if we should try to make a roguelike as our next project. Yeah, why not, he said. So, we decided to make a roguelike with a sci-fi theme. Starring a bearded space guy who kills aliens in space, because... space reasons, I guess? We tried some different level layouts, ranging from old ruins, forests and some kind of spaceship. But nothing that we tried really felt right to us. 
And once again, we were close to abandon yet another game. But wait, I said. What if we keep the roguelike part of the game and just change the setting? What if, instead of a bearded space guy, our protagonist is instead a small boy? And the game could take place in his nightmares, with his bedroom acting as the game lobby. That way, we could create all kinds of weird levels, enemies and weapons, because it's all just a dream. So we created our new main character, Billy. The boy who would face all evil nightmares wearing his pajamas. We were pretty happy with this design. Even though in the first version, Billy looked like he was straight out of a nightmare himself. With our new protagonist ready, it was time to decide what kind of theme our different nightmare levels would have. We decided that one level should be a nightmare about Billy's school. Why a school? Well, there's many things in a school that can give a small boy nightmares. There's evil bullies, classroom skeletons, creepy teachers, lunch ladies, and even janitors. Killing enemies in the nightmare rewards you with teeth, which is the currency of the game. Find a shop run by the Tooth Fairy and you can buy weapons and health from her. There's also a semi-friendly character in the game, Santa Claus himself. When entering a room, there's a small chance that you will run into each other. Both your items will scatter across the floor, and you'll have to raid towards them before Santa collects everything. A sequence that is obviously very inspired by the maple encounter from The Legend of Zelda. Another thing is that you won't have to face the nightmares alone. You can always invite a friend to help you, since our game supports both local and online co-op. Something that we learned how to do back in Heroes of Highwall. Our roguelike has evolved a lot since we started working on it almost a year ago. This first devlog focused more on the backstory of how our game came to be. In the next devlog, I will probably talk more about specific things we're working on at the moment. And hopefully, the video won't be titled Two Years in the Making. Until then, thanks for watching. And remember, don't let your nightmares wake you up.